In this video, we'll review the aerodynamics of flaps as a companion to my May 2021 article in AOPA Pilot Magazine. Lift is a function of air density rho, wing area s, velocity v, and coefficient of lift, which is determined by the airfoil design. Extending flaps downward creates a higher possible lift coefficient, and for some designs, a greater wing area. Incidentally, it also lowers the critical angle of attack. The net effect of deflecting flaps downward is to, with other factors remaining the same, increase the lift that the wing produces. Extending flaps also creates more drag. Given that an aileron is nothing more than a flap, we know that the drag created by that downwardly deflected aileron creates adverse yaw for which rudder application is required to maintain coordinated flight. In this smoke tunnel video, you'll see that extending the flaps results in detached flow and the energy needed to create that is a form of drag. We traditionally compare the benefit of the increase in lift with the disadvantage of an increase in drag using the lift to drag ratio, since it's also the glide ratio in a no wind situation at the best glide airspeed. Even though extending flaps provides more lift, doing so hurts glide performance. Here is the drag polar curve generated for a Cessna Cardinal with flaps set at zero degrees. The lift to drag ratio using best glide airspeed is found by taking a line from the origin that is just tangent to the curve. In this case, we get a lift to drag ratio of 11.1. In other words, this aircraft should be capable of gliding 1110 feet forward for every 100 feet of altitude loss. When the flaps are deflected 30 degrees, the lift to drag ratio decreases to only 8.43. To put things in perspective, upon engine failure at an altitude of 1,000 feet, this shaded area represents the possible landing spots in a no-wind situation. When the flaps are retracted, the area becomes much larger. That increase in area is 73%. Here's the drag polar for a Lance Air. With flaps set at zero, the lift to drag ratio is 16.35, and with flaps deflected just four degrees down, there is a slight decrease in 6.3. What's interesting about this airplane is that there is an option to put the flaps in reflex position at 7 degrees upward and the lift to drag ratio soars to 18.0. In an engine out situation in which gliding to a more favorable terrain is imperative, putting the flaps in reflex position might be a great idea. Extending flaps also increases descent angle, which can be a good thing when an object such as a tree is up against a runway. Based on tests with my own Cessna 152, the lift to drag ratio with 30 degrees of flaps was equivalent to that reduction of a 20 knot headwind and a clean flap configuration. Extending flaps can also help us climb out at a slower airspeed and can be a key ingredient in clearing an obstacle at the departure end of the runway. Rectangular wings have the best stall characteristics in that they tend to stall at the root first, but they're not the most efficient shape. Here's a tapered wing and one strategy that manufacturers use to force more favorable stall characteristics is washout. In other words, there's a bit of twist to the wing so that the inboard portion has a higher angle of incidence 
and that angle becomes lower toward the wingtips. When flaps are extended, the washout increases even more, and that helps warn the pilot of an impending stall while the ailerons still have an effect. Extending flaps also lowers stall speed. Here's the chart for my Beechcraft Bonanza, and you'll see that extending flaps lowers the stall speed from 63 knots to 54 knots. Anything that helps us fly more slowly will help us land in a more confined area. The landing distance as well as the energy to be dissipated on landing are functions of speed squared. Touching down at 54 knots instead of 63 knots represents a 27% decrease in landing distance. Extending flaps also changes pitch attitude. Here's the last part of an instrument approach conducted in the clean configuration. On this day, about 14 inches of manifold pressure was necessary to maintain the approach path for this instrument approach into Winchester, Tennessee. Here is the same instrument approach with flaps extended. In this case, 18 inches of manifold pressure was required to maintain the same approach path. You'll also see that the pitch attitude is a good bit lower in this approach, and that might be helpful for finding the airport environment upon breaking out of instrument conditions. So extending flaps can give a more favorable pitch attitude and prepare us for landing, but it does come at the cost of much greater power needed to fly the approach. Airspeed has a profound effect on turn radius. Doubling velocity quadruples turn radius, or said another way, cutting the velocity in half cuts turn radius by a factor of four. Since flaps let us fly at a lower airspeed, they can help us make a much tighter turn. And there's no situation in which that is more important than the traditional canyon turn scenario in which obstacles make a tight turn imperative. Many of my practical exam candidates will tell me that a Shondell is the antidote to that situation, and that's just not true at all. Here's a simulation I did comparing the turn diameter for a Shondell in my airplane, almost 3,500 feet, versus the diameter for the traditional canyon turn in which flaps were extended and the airspeed slowed as much as possible while maintaining control for the course reversal. In this case, the turn diameter was closer to 1,100 feet, about a third as much as the Shondell. In summary, extending flaps increases lift, it also increases drag. And in comparing those two quantities, it lowers the lift to drag ratio. So if you find yourself in a situation in which gliding some distance is important, you'll definitely want to clean up the airplane and retract the flaps. It can increase your climb and descent angle, which may be 
a good thing if you're landing or taking off from a short strip. It increases the washout, which helps with low speed flying characteristics, and it decreases stall speed, which is a good thing if you're touching down in a confined area. It also changes your pitch attitude, which might give you a more favorable attitude in which to find the field when breaking out of instrument conditions. It comes at the cost of significantly higher power required to maintain that approach path. And finally, anything that lowers your stall speed is going to lower your turn radius. So if you find yourself in a confined area and need to make a course reversal, consider putting the flaps down and slowing the airspeed. For links to my other articles and videos, see my site at aceairbaticschool.com.